Floyd Money Mayweather. Uh, yes, yes. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why uh, are we getting ready <laughs> to watch Floyd Money Mayweather in the ring against Conor McGregor August 26th? Oh, man. Um, this is what the world demanded. Um, I put myself in the right position uh, to make it happen. So I put myself in the right position to make it happen. Um, it's all about chess. Mm -hmm. And it's not really about being on a chess board anymore. It's about controlling the chess board. And, you know, that's what I was able to do. How, is, how did Floyd Money Mayweather control the chess board uh, with this particular fight? Well, easy. You know, I, I knew what to say, you know. Well, I knew when to say it. Um, I knew what to post on social media. And um, I know, you know, some, some cool people in some cool places um, to make certain calls. To, you know, to make this big event happen. Did you want this fight, or did you respond to somebody who wanted you? Um, actually, I asked for the fight. Mm. I think it was kind of mutual. You know, I think um, I wanted the fight. Pretty sure he wanted the fight. Um, I don't think in the beginning Dana White thought the fight could happen, but we're here now. You wanted to fight. Why? Um, Not just because that's what the people wanted. I know I got that answer, but of what, course. what, what, I mean, what of else? Course. I mean, if I could put myself in a position to make nine figures, why not? Why not? So I put myself in a position. There are those who look at this particular fight. Yes. And we see Conor McGregor, UFC. Knockout artist. Yes. But someone who has never stepped in a boxing ring professionally. He's still a warrior. He's still a fighter. He's still a warrior. He's still a fighter. And every time Conor McGregor has went out there in the UFC and he's and he was victorious, he was standing up. Only time he took a L is when he was on the ground. But every time he stood up. He kicked ass. I will challenge you on that for a second. I know that he had to tap out because you reminded everybody of that on the tour. Yes, how I did. He tapped out. I remember that. Yes, I did. But I recall Nate Diaz hitting him first and wobbling him, which ultimately led to him ending up on a match. Mean, anyone can be hit with a good shot. Okay. No, we cannot overlook Nate Diaz. He's a warrior also. Things happen. I mean, Nate Diaz was a better man that night. Nate Diaz went out there and done what he's supposed to do. He hit him with a good shot, which put him in a position to put him in a choke lock. And that's what happened. Now, you know where I'm going with this question. Yes. Because we're talking about a Conor McGregor, no matter how gifted he is. He's very gifted. And, and I, he's and a warrior. I, and I know where you're going with this. Okay, go ahead. But I want to say this. He's a lot younger. You know, when you... When you look at the two on paper, when you look at myself and you look at Conor McGregor on paper, he's taller, has a longer reach. He's a bigger man from top to bottom, a lot younger. So youth is on his side. And I've been off a couple years. Mm. So, and now I'm in my 40s. So, you know, if you look at everything on paper, it leans towards Conor McGregor. Actually, you didn't know where I was going. I thought you were, but you didn't oh, know. Well, I guess because I didn't know. you didn't know. Here's why. Okay. The question that I have to ask is, a man that has never fought in a boxing ring is going to be in a boxing ring with someone who is on the record that he is TBE, the best ever. And I mean, did, he, I feel, did, did, he, did he earn this? Is he truly worthy of being in the ring with you? In combat sports, there's only two names right now at the top in combat sports. Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Even when I was away from the sport for two years, still in boxing, all you hear is Floyd Mayweather. And in MMA, you hear Conor McGregor. Hold on now. I do know the name Canelo Alvarez, who you schooled. No doubt. You schooled him. Uh, there is a guy by the name of Triple G, and in the UFC, Con J John Bones Jones just came back. Okay. There's some other names. John Jones is a hell of a fighter, but he's been off the radar, you know, because yeah. 
of course, you go through trials and tribulations. You go through ups and downs. So we would never want to, I would never want to talk bad about uh, John Jones. And we have another fighter from St. Louis, you know, the other MMA fighter from St. Louis, that's a hell of a fighter also. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the other kid that just won? Well, it, ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it certainly ain't Conor McGregor. It's not Woodley, Woodley. Tyrone Woodley, Tyrone Woodley, yes. Woodley, Woodley is a hell of a fighter. John Jones is a hell of a fighter. But you must realize this. Um, I always say this, you know, uh, racism still exists. Even though I have a diverse staff, racism still exists. You take Floyd Mayweather, flamboyant, flash, outgoing, outspoken. You know what they say? He's cocky, he's arrogant, he's unappreciative. But then we take Conor McGregor, takes my whole blueprint. He's in the MMA, takes my whole blueprint, and they praise him. Whereas, I can't knock him. I think he done a hell of a job. And I'm not here to knock him, I think he done a, a tremendous job. But I just try to show the people, you know, what goes on in this world today. So what are you saying? That that very racism that you're alluding to is what made this fight possible because it's why I mean, the people I mean, are demanding I mean, it? Is that what you're saying? If this, this fight is black and white, meaning, meaning that I'm going out there, when I go out there and fight and I lace up those gloves, I'm doing it for the, uh, I'm doing it for the Americans, I'm doing it for the Spanish, I'm doing it for everybody all around the world. And I know he's doing it for himself and he's doing it for his Irish fans. Mm -hmm. But me, myself, I'm doing it for myself, I'm doing it for my country, and I'm doing it for my people, and I'm doing it for the Spanish also. But I'm also doing it for my fans all around the world. But I asked the question and I go back to what I originally said. A man that has never been in a boxing ring is in the ring with the best ever. That's what you talk, that's what you describe yourself as being. I don't describe myself. We must realize men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. 49 and 0. Not just 49 and 0. Let's okay. really, let's really okay, get to talk okay, about I'm listening. I'm Mayweather listening. That's, then, then broke every record in boxing. When we get to talk about highest gate, even when they was like right now, they saying, oh, Mayweather fight didn't sell out. Well, you know, when, when they do sell out, I think I'll reach somewhere like, you know, the live gate that reached like 80 something million for this fight. Already, we already had 60 something million for those that are saying that Mayweather is not doing numbers anymore. Um, as far as taking the less punishment, I took less punishment than any fighter. Uh, not just best defense, let's talk about offense. The most accurate fighter of all time. On the outside of the ring, it's not just about being in the inside of the ring, I already, I already conquered that. I was, I'm even smarter on the outside. You know, I have to be a genius to even make this, to even make a fight like this happen. So what do, what what does that say about me for well, making this fight? It happen? says that you're it says that you're a brilliant businessman, not just a great boxer. So the, and that's what I always spoke about. That's what I always spoke about. I get my credit about what I do in the ring, but I don't get my credit about what I do on the outside. I actually disagree. I think you get your credit for what you do outside the ring because it is undeniable. <laughs> when you consider pay-per-view sales, when you, can give, when you consider the money that you've made, when you consider how you can give lessons on how to make money outside of your profession, yes. marketing your profession, there's nobody that would even challenge you on that. What they would challenge you, however, is that hasn't been a knockout since Ricky Hatton. You take the distance, you school guys, but at the same time, your last fight was Andre Berto, who some would say didn't belong in the ring with you. They so, look at that. They say Andre Berto, a guy, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's a two-time world champion. Yes, he was. He's an Olympian. Yes, he was. And um, he took, he took a, a couple losses, but he bounced back each and every time. Every time he took Well, we respect him. We're just saying he's not on the level of Floyd Mayweather, which is well, what... Well, I mean, a guy that's a lot younger than me, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way out. So you're going to say that I can't fight a, a solid guy? I can see if a guy... So, they're talking about Andre Berto, okay? So it was okay for Manny Pacquiao to fight the guy he just fought. But then it's a problem for me to fight a, a, a two-time world champion. The guy Pacquiao fight, we don't even know. We don't even know who he is. I don't even know his name right now. Joe Horn. 
from so, Australia. Okay. And so that should even been on ESPN. That fight shouldn't even be on ESPN at all. You're about to fight Conor McGregor. Yes. Let's get back to him. Yes. It's the money. The two biggest names. Respect, the two biggest the names. The two biggest names in the sport. In, in combat sports. Have you entertained the possibility of how disastrous this would be if a miracle happened and he actually beat you and you lost? Have you entertained that at all? Have you thought about it? Have when you dreamed about it? Have there been nightmares about it, Floyd? When a fight gets, gets to the, when you when you're fighting at this level, there's no loser. When you're fighting at this level, there's no loser. I mean, I ain't never known a man to make hundreds and hundreds of millions that's a loser. I find it very difficult, Floyd. Let me pause. <laughs> I find it very difficult to yes. believe that Floyd Money Mayweather, even if you pocketed two, three hundred million dollars for this one night's work, mm -hmm. if you walked out of that ring, I'm going to walk out that ring with my head up high. If you lost, you? I'm a 49 and 0? I'm going to walk out that ring with my head high. I'm a fighter. What about your hand? Is your hand going to be raised high? I'm going to walk out the ring happy. I asked you a direct question, Floyd Mayweather. We'll just see what happens August 26th. You're 49 and 0. You have never lost. I have seen you go into the ring against Boxers who are extraordinary, they were thought to be killers, and you said, I'm the best. I'm the best ever. And Nobody will beat and me. And they will lose. And Conor McGregor I'm, is a killer. He's right. a killer. And you would say, definitively, they're going to lose. How come I'm not hearing that from you right now? I'm older. What does that mean? I'm not the same. What does that mean? I'm not the same. What does that mean? I'm not the same fighter I was two years ago. I'm not the same fighter I was five years ago. You're the same man? But I'm not the same fighter. I lost a step. Are you really trying to sell us on that? That, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that you slipped. Floyd Mayweather slipped. You see what you just said when I fought uh, Andre Berto. A fighter like Andre Berto don't even supposed to go to distance with Floyd Mayweather. But remember, I was, I was 38. So like I said before, it's obvious I'm slipping a little bit to even let a fighter like that go to distance with me. So now that's where we are? Floyd Mayweather is sitting in front of me talking about words like slipping and slippage and all that. That's where we are now? You trying to sell us on the fact that you, you, you're trying to sell us on the notion that you may have slipped and you may not be what you used to be? I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I used how to be. How would you know? You haven't been in the ring in two years. How do you know? Because I see how I worked when I came to the, when I, when I got in the gym, I see how I worked. I, I'm not, I wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen against Conor McGregor, Floyd? I want the truth, man. Um, What's going to happen against Conor McGregor? I just want everybody to tune in. I can't really say. I just know what I know what I bring to the table, and we know what he brings to the table. According to you, you don't know what you bring to the table because you slept. I it's two years ago. I didn't say that I couldn't fight. I just said I just know I'm not the same Floyd Mayweather I once was. Because you even said the same thing. You said we haven't had a, a knockout since Ricky Hatton, and you mean Ortiz. Right, well, yes, that's true. Well, well I'm that still sharp. True. I'm still no, no, sharp. No, 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 he, okay. Ortiz deserved it. Ortiz, he headbutted you. He deserved what he got. I've got no problems with that. I've got no problems with that. Um, and, you know, I just think about the body can break down. Remember, I was in a lot of big fights early on in my career. So the body can break down. So when a, when, when a body broke down and a body was no longer 100%, I still had a sharp mind. Are you trying to prepare all of us for this notion that it's possible that you could lose? Is that what you're trying to tell us? Is that what I mean, I mean losing is never in my mind. Losing is never in my mind. I just say things can happen. And if it happened and Floyd Mayweather walked out with a stain on his record, it wouldn't affect you. God, You'd be all right. My mother, my mother and my children are still going to love me the same way. I'm still going to have the same lavish lifestyle. Life going to go on. They're going to move on to the next. I find this very hard to believe. I can't believe what I'm hearing right now. This is not what I'm accustomed to hearing from Floyd. Conor McGregor, uh -huh. and I said this prior to your promotional tour, Floyd Mayweather is loving this because 
for once <laughs> he has someone who's helping him promote absolutely a fight. absolutely could you talk about that how difficult life has been for you over the last few years because you felt like you had to do most of the promoting it was hard it was hard i mean just going out there uh, with Oscar De La Hoy, with, uh, with Ricky Haddon, with Canelo, and a lot of other opponents, uh, top guys that I face, even with Manny Pacquiao, with, with me carrying the promotion, or me trying my hardest to push these guys to trash talk so they can get in their zone. If the, the more trash they talk, the more trash I talk, it's going to make them work harder. It's going to make me work harder, which is going to give the fans more of what they want to see. And this guy, he stepped up to the plate. One thing about him, I could say he stepped up to the plate and I, he played he played a major role. You think he meant it? Everything that he said about you? Um, I just didn't like when he called us monkeys. I think that was totally disrespect. I didn't hear that. I know he called boy. I know he said boy. I didn't hear monkeys. Yeah, he called us monkeys. And so I didn't like it, you know, and it didn't push a button to make me, you know, jump all out of my character and, and go crazy, but I didn't like it. What went through your mind? Um, you know, I just thought about, you know, all our different leaders. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, that went on the front line for me and my family and all my loved ones. And like I said before, this stuff still goes on. But I'm strong, smart, patient, and come August 26th, I'll be the same person. Smart, strong, patient, and the same way he called us monkeys. We're going to see if he say that August 26th. You step into the ring, you're going to remember all of that. Is that extra motivation for you, for the fight? Um, or is it no different than any other fight? No different. No different. But this is for a cause. This is for the American people. This is for the for all the blacks around the world. Last time we can remember something like this was Larry Holmes versus Jerry Cooney. Yes. It was clearly white versus black, but and they were both Americans. That's not the case here. But You're trying to compare it to that? This is on a bigger scale because eras had, you know, it's, it's different eras. This era is, I call this era the Mayweather era. And in the, in the Mayweather era, you know, we have you know, social media, we have computers in this era. So it's, it's a lot different now. Floyd, what if you hit him and he keeps coming? He just keeps coming. He's an MMA fighter. They're used to being hit. They're used to being kicked, getting hit with elbows, all types of stuff. What if this guy keeps coming? You are 40. You have been out of the ring for a couple of years. You're trying to make us conv convince us that you've slipped just a little bit, even though I, you can still fight. I didn't say, I didn't say. I'm not saying slip like this, but I'm as obvious. I remember, you know, I used to have a 90% knockout ratio. It's, it's still just over 50%, but remember I had a 90% a 90 knockout ratio. And it's no, long, it's no longer 90, so it's obvious I slipped somewhere. Mm. You know, something has, you know, taken a toll on my career. Moved up in weight, hand injuries, uh, as you moved up in weight, didn't necessarily carry all of that power with you. That could be it, and now you're talking about him well, being nobody, a big guy. Nobody's just walking through me. Ain't nobody walking me down. You know, when I fought, you know, uh, and I think Canelo's a hell of a fighter. He's one of the top fighters out there, but Canelo didn't just wa walk me down. I didn't run from Canelo. You know, when um, I had to fall so many different champions. Let me look over it's there. It's all right. Diego Corrales, Oscar De La yeah, Hoya. I'm just saying, I mean, like, the list goes on right, and I mean, on. I mean, the list goes on. And when I faced McDonald, he came straight, but then I was pressing the attack also. You know, so it's always, you know, uh, it's a catch-22. It goes, kind of goes both ways. Brother Madani hit you in the third round. 
Who? Stunned you. Madonna. Marcos Madonna. Hit you in the third round. Stunned mm -hmm. you. It was the end of the round. Okay. Sugar Shane Mosley caught you in the second round. That, that was in a that was in the second fight of me and Madonna. That's right. The second yeah. fight of you and Madonna. Mm -hmm. uh, when you shush, when you fought Sugar Shane, he caught you in the second round. Stunned you just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some people would say that'll not happen. My man Max Kellerman swears there's no way on earth you'll even get touched in this fight. He predicted you won't even get touched. Is that where you are? Are you prepared for that? Not to be touched. This can't be a defensive fight. Excuse me? I gotta go to him. I gotta go to him. Are you saying that you're going to go to Conor McGregor? I gotta go to him. You're not going to back up. You're going to go to him. I have to go to him. Why? I gotta do what I gotta do. Why? If you didn't have to go, through, to go to other fighters in order to beat them. Why do you feel the need to do that in this fight? Because I owe the, I owe the public for the Pacquiao fight. Since they wasn't pleased with the Pacquiao fight, they gonna play, they gonna be they gonna be pleased with this fight right here. Do you think that this should count for 50 and 0 if you win this fight? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's 49, if it's 50, even if it's not on my boxing record. Just give me the check. As you sit back mm -hmm. and we think about this fight, yeah. there are those. Yes. I mean, you've heard what Oscar De La Hoya has had to say. <laughs> you've heard what others, I'm going there. Let me ask the question. Essentially, what you're being accused of mm -hmm. is discrediting <laughs> the, the sport of boxing by allowing a relative novice to step into the ring <laughs> with somebody who's universally recognized as one of the greatest ever. To that, you say what? If I'm not mistaken, Oscar De La Hoya I want everybody to put us up on YouTube. Oscar De La Hoy was just trying to get Canelo to fight McGregor before he, before he got to fight with Triple G. So please, I want everybody at home that's watching this interview, you know, go look and see what Oscar did. And then Oscar De La Hoy also said, Floyd Mayweather is not good for boxing, but I was good enough for you to fight to get your biggest payday. Remember, he said, I'm not good for boxing. So you telling me dressing in drag, doing cocaine, being an alcoholic is, is a good example for these young fighters up and coming? When you, talk, when, you, when you talk about boxing, when you even mention boxing, you have to bring my name up, period. But, 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 these fighters, there's no fighters that look up to Oscar De La Hoya but, but, at but, all. But why go there? There are things that he could say about you. He doesn't say anything about you, but you as the boxer, because he believes that this fight doesn't compare to Triple G and Canelo, and for boxing lovers. I don't have to fight. I, Triple G has to fight Canelo. I don't have to fight Canelo. You already seen what I did with Canelo. I already did what I have to do. I already did what I had to do, you know, in a 21-year career. You put him in front of me, and I beat him. When you talk about the gate, I'm at the top. When you're talking about landing on the highest percentage, I'm at the top. And when you're talking about making the, the most money, we ain't got to talk about that. We already know who at the top. So is it jealousy? Absolutely. All around the board. Because if any legendary champion or if Oscar De La Hoya was in this position right now, and he was, and he was in a position to fight McGregor if any, and, and make a fortune, he would do it, but it's only one problem. He don't have the swag of a Floyd Mayweather. He don't have a, he don't have a Mayweather team. You know, like I said before, he's, he's not even on the chessboard anymore. Like I said before, when you talk about uh, Al Heyman, you talk about Mayweather promotion, and you talk about us, we put people out of business. We put people out of business, that's what we do. So in other words, everybody- So, so Oscar De La Hoya is the same fighter that did like this. He came and got with us. He came and communicated with me and Al. Hand fed me all his, beat him. Then he hand fed me all his fighters. And then guess what? Right now, all his fighters is with us. So, so you tell me, so you tell me, wouldn't you be upset? Wouldn't you be upset? Because the thing is this, they were fighting on Golden Boy cards. They was, you know, they was fighting on under Golden Boy promotions, but they wasn't signed to Golden Fair Boy. Fair enough, but you have boxing purists who look at this, and again, it speaks to your greatness. They're saying, look, 
Stephen A or somebody else can't just walk into the ring with Mayweather. We don't deserve to be in front of you competing against you. But what have we done but, to earn that? What do, they, what do you say to folks that look at you and the decision that you're making? Because it's about the money. and ain't no problems with that. But they're I, looking I say, at boxing. I'm going to say and, August 26. That day, me and McGregor are going to be the, the two happiest in Showtime. Me, McGregor, Showtime, and the UFC, we're going to be the happiest people on earth August 26. We're talking about a billion dollar fight. Mm. We're talking about a billion dollar fight, and you know, I've already, in the sport of boxing, I've already made somewhere upwards of 800 million. You make, you made money. You're gonna make a hell of a lot more money. But Do the you? main thing is, I made smart investments, and I still make millions every month. Do you care about your boxing legacy? More than what? More well, ain't gonna, we ain't gonna say more than money. We know better. Uh, We're not gonna say more than money. More, we know more, better. More than my family? No. So what's more important? My children. Because when I make this money, you know what? I put my children and my family in a position that they are entrepreneurs. They are bosses. I don't want my kids to have to answer to nobody. So. I will take the long road, I will take the bumps and the bruises for them, but, for my loved ones. But fear, it's important to point this out about you. You're not just that way when it comes to your family and your children. You're that way with professional athletes. I know NBA players that have relationships with yes. you, professional football players that have relationships yes. with you, etc. And the same thing that you just said that you preach to your children and your family, yes. you've been preaching to them. Yes. That seems to be a personal mission of yours. Why? It's about giving back. You know, I don't have to go on record and talk about the things that I do. I don't have to go on record and post about families that I take care of and children, children that are less fortunate, children that, you know, it's a kid. Kid named Taylor. He has um, cancer. Kid said, "My only wish before I die is to meet Floyd Mayweather." And that's not the only kid that I've been through that you know that that has said that is that is his wish, his his or her wish. But this little kid named Taylor, and he came to the boxing gym and waited for me. I got here on time, and when I seen him, it brought tears to my eyes because he, he reminded me of my oldest son when he, my oldest son was young. And this kid is only 10 years old. So we took a picture after he was here. He seen me box, he seen me train, we talked, he asked me so many questions. But We took a picture. I wanted to post it on social media, and I couldn't post it because I couldn't find the words to say. Every day I think about this, this child, every day. So yesterday when I woke up, before I came to the box gym, I said, you know what I want to do today? I want to call Taylor. I want to spend time with this kid. So I, called, I got in touch with his dad. I said, I want to go to GameStop. Went to GameStop, took the kid in there, I said, get, it, get everything you want to get. This kid, I mean, life is priceless. And, and, when I, and life is priceless. And your health is your wealth. So a lot of times, they say, Floyd, won't you stick around boxing? You can make this and you can make that, you can make this. Two, two years off, I could have made a ton of money. But remember, your health is your wealth. But there's a lot of things that come with that. Yes. That's a sentimental Floyd. Yes. Very sensitive Floyd Mayweather. But that, we don't talk hold about on, that. Hold on. We, we never talk about but that. But that, whose fault is that? That's yours. That's the media yeah, fault. No, 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 they that's yours. No, that. no, 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 no. I'm telling you, that's your fault. Because here's why it's your fault. Because you don't like to talk about those things. You like to talk about money. 
You like to talk about but how but you but make money. You like to talk about yeah, you but being but a business man. Get, but Just, I do give back. No, I didn't, I'm not questioning that. I'm I do not, give back. No, I'm not questioning but that. I, what I'm not, saying is you don't want to tell I, us I about that. To, you know, I don't have to come and say, you know what? Right. We give back. We just gave back. My team, Mayweather Promotions, the Floyd Mayweather Foundation, we give away backpacks. We give away school supplies. We give away computers. We get the kids shoes. We get families turkeys. We get the kids gifts. We do a lot. And we've been doing this for 21 years. But listen to where I'm going. What I'm saying to you is that all of those things are things that you've mentioned periodically throughout the years off camera. But on camera, you seemed but hell you know bent on promoting something entirely different about but, yourself. But you know what? And, and I feel that. Why is that? And, but you know what? But I feel that's the reason why. I'm so blessed. I feel like God blessed me in, in many different ways. You don't have to go out there and, and glorify what you've done for, for so many people around the world, as long as God know what I've done. Because you, you, I'm saying you got a lot of celebrities and a lot of entertainers, and they want to get credit and they want to get props because they, they can post what they, they can post a picture on social media or they can have, have the, the news camera come and look what I've done for this family. Look what I've done with these people. I've been doing it for 21 years and I never asked, a, I, I never posted it. I, I mean, we, uh, my team may have posted it mm -hmm. or someone who runs my social media may have posted it a few times. And even on, on all access, we show a few times that they want to show different parts of you. You know, they don't just, they, they just want to show just boxing, boxing, right, boxing. Right. They want to show it's more to you than just one side. But I want you to hear this question in its totality because I want you to see where I'm going because I'm going to a deeper place here. Okay. You got the sentimental Floyd. Yes. You got the charitable Floyd. Yes. You got money Mayweather. Yes, you do. Okay. Then you've got an individual that didn't mind being hated to the point where even when there's something great to talk about when it comes to Floyd, you even have McGregor talking about pay your damn taxes. You've got, you, you've got Oscar De La Hoya alluding to stuff about you and you were going back and, and you just mentioned something about him. The list goes on and on. So what I'm saying is I'm what, per, what person, I'm, I'm what, what, talk what, about, man. what Floyd money Mayweather does Floyd Mayweather want everyone to see most? Who's that guy? At the end of the day, it's at the end of the day. As long as those four children, my mother, my father, and those that count, those that genuinely love me, know who I am, everything else shouldn't matter. So that's all that matters after 21 years in boxing where you have 49 fights, you've won undefeated, unblemished, beat champions, established yourself as one of the best ever, if not the best ever, and you're telling me that all that matters is your family and your loved ones. No, but I'm not going to say my fans don't matter. And, well, I, and your fans. And, 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 I, I, and people don't matter. No, I'm not, no, no, I'm not, gonna I'm say. not saying that. What okay. I'm, talking, I'm talking about your record. I'm talking about your legacy in the sport of boxing. It means nothing to you. Because if, if that if that's the case, you really have changed. Something is wrong. Because that's not the Floyd Mayweather I know. I'm older. That's all about my family. It's really all about my family. I do it for them. This fight right here is just for my family. What if somebody said they're listening to you right now? And I, what they're getting from you is that Floyd hedging his bet. Just in case he loses. A miracle happens. And just in case he loses, that's why he's sounding like that. And they, they're entitled to their own opinion. We'll see, how, we'll see how it look in fight night, mm. you know? What if they're saying that Floyd is saying that because he's just trying to make, he's just trying to promote the fight and make it interesting? <laughs> he know this man can't touch him. He's lying us all. He's setting us up. I don't know what he can do. You know, I don't really know what he can do. I mean, what I've seen so far, he go out there and, and get the job done. And he's flashy, he's flamboyant, and he's outspoken, and he's from, he's from another country. And his fight is black and white. This is the second time you've come out of retirement. Is there going to be a third? The first time was a vacation, we should say. Yeah, but that's, you, you said it was a retirement. I mean, I know it was a vacation. I thought he was going to come back. I, just, but I, I, I needed a break. I just needed a break away from the sport. So the first time I'm going to say is it was a vacation. Like 2008, something like that. I think it was around well, 2000. I, I, I needed a vacation. That was it. I just needed a vacation. Some time off to get my mind right. And second so, go round what? 
Second go round, I ain't had no plans on coming back at all. At all. We talked about this. At all. And um, they gave me a deal I couldn't refuse. Is there another deal out there that you won't be able to refuse if you win this fight? No, I'm through. If, I, get, if it, uh, I know. No, don't go to Canelo and Triple G. Don't go there. I, I, was, I, I wasn't I gave, going there. I don't matter. I gave Al Heyman my word. I shook his hand. I shook his hand. I gave him my word. This is my last one. What do you mean you gave Al Heyman your word? Why would you need to give Al Heyman your word about retirement? Because I have. Because that, that, that's what I wanted to do. I'm saying he wants you to retire from no, this? I mean, that's what I wanted to do. Okay. And we talked. And I got, re I got much respect for him. I got much respect for him. And he cared about my health. And he genuinely cared about me. I shook his hand and I gave him my word. He cared about my health. He cared about me, period. He's, he said, there's nothing that you need for. You have houses and mansions everywhere. You have cars everywhere. Your kids are, are doing great. Your mother is doing great. Your father is doing great. And you're doing great. I hesitate to ask this question, but I owe it to you because people chirp and talk about this stuff all the time and don't ask you directly. Considering all the money you have and the success that you have, mm -hmm. Why are you in the news over tax issues? I got a tax attorney that, that, that handles my tax business. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to tell the people that um, I still sleep in my $15 million house in Vegas. Well, I have more than one house in Vegas. One of my $15 million houses that I have in Vegas. Um, still have my house in Beverly Hills. Um, still got my property in New York. Still got my property everywhere. Um, Miami? Yeah, Miami. A yeah. couple, couple properties in Miami. So um, a lot of times, you know, like I said, when, you, when you're in a certain position, they try to defeat you in many different ways. As far as when they lock me up, um, they call me a woman beater, a wife beater. Yet, we, yet and still, we still haven't seen any photos. After all those years, still no photos. You know uh, people are going to go off about you for even bringing that up. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Floyd Mayweather lives for Floyd Mayweather. I don't hide or, or shy away from anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not like that. What you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, um, like... They're going to ask you, are you guilty of such a thing? I mean, they can say whatever they want to say. I don't... Even like every day in my life, certain men like to deal with one woman. Um, a one woman. Me, myself, I deal with how many women I want to deal with. I live my life the way I want to live my life. I do what makes Floyd Mayweather happy. No different from anyone else that's watching this interview. You have to do what makes you happy. And Floyd Mayweather gonna do what makes him happy. But you're also thoughtful enough where you don't want to come across as misogynistic. You don't want to come across as somebody that's distasteful with women or anything. You don't no. want women out there saying something like that about you, do you? I mean, what do you, what do you mean distasteful? Because, no. because, because I, I, okay, when Hugh Hefner, has a Playboy Mansion, right? And Hugh Hefner knows a lot of different women. Doesn't mean he's sleeping with every woman. He has a lot of different women, right? But we don't say nothing about Hugh Hefner doing it. But then once again, we take a, we take a black man, myself, and I live my life the way I want to live it. I'm not disrespecting no woman. You know, I treat them good. I live my life the way I want to live it. Um, I do what I want to do. I, as long as I'm not breaking no laws or disrespecting anyone, I do what I want to do, how I want to do it. So is that a crime? No. As you've been away from the game and you reflect on your life and your career right now. Yes. Where are you? Just looking at the life of Floyd Mayweather. Just looking at my life. I don't think most people can handle, handle being in my shoes. Yo, yo. You good? You good? I don't think. I mean, as of right now, I don't think no one can handle my situation. Why not? They just, they just can't. What's your situation that can't be handled? I'm saying it's like, I mean, they feel like it's pressure on me. I mean, like I said, they try to defeat me in many different ways. I, uh, they, they, they try to bring up the tax thing. They try to bring up he's been locked up. I mean, uh, he's arrogant. He's unappreciative. I mean, years and years and years, they've been trying their best to defeat me mentally I can't be defeated do you believe that America and Americans want Conor McGregor to win more than they want you to win don't know 
do you care? Americans now, that's what we're talking about. I love America. I love this country. I fought for this country in the 96 Olympic Games. And, and I'm gonna be the first one to tell. I'm, I'll be the first one to tell anybody. I'm not an African American. I'm an American. I was born on American soil. But I did go back to the motherland, and I love it. And made millions going back to the motherland. But I was born in America, and then it's no, no different from the, we gonna go, we, we're gonna go into the Floyd Mayweather mine. So when the Europeans came to the Native Americans, well, they like to call them Native Americans, but the Indians land. We don't call them European Americans. So uh, I don't want to be called an African American. I'm an American. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? You can call me a black American, but I'm an American. So if America, you know, when on I went, August no, I, I want to say this. Go ahead. When I competed in the, in the Olympics, they didn't say fighting uh, an African American. They said uh, that American that's fighting out of the red corner or out the blue corner. So you're an American? Absolutely. Leading red, too. white, and blue. Of course I am. Absolutely. Of course Absolutely. I am proud of it. But here's the deal. And, uh, and if I, America and, and, but, on but, August. But one thing about me, I don't forget where I come from. Neither do I. You know, I come, I come from poverty. I come from poverty. I come from the hood. I come from the streets. And um, I'm the American dream. I work my way from nothing to something. So with that being said, America should appreciate you. If on August 26th, they're rooting for Conor McGregor instead of Floyd, how's that going to make you feel? I'm going to be thinking about this. It doesn't matter. All they're doing is putting money in, in my children's account at the end of the day. At the end of the day. You know, like I said, man, I'm a strong individual. Nothing can throw me off, nothing can throw me off, throw me off key. I'm always focused on what I gotta do. And that's gonna be the case August 26th? August 26th is gonna be real interesting. Like I said, and I'm not backing up. Remember I told you that. You're not backing up. I'm not backing up. We ain't gonna see you backing up. We ain't gonna see you retreating. We ain't gonna see you moving away from that left hand of his. I mean, I gotta, I mean, I am human. Now, hold on, I'm, you know, I gotta listen to what my, the instructions that my dad give me. But I'm gonna communicate with my dad and tell him, listen, I gotta go at him. And most likely, he gonna agree with me. Or we gonna agree. You know, we're gonna have a, you know, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a, uh, a hell of a game plan whipped up. You walking out to beat this man or you walking out there to embarrass him? Both. Both. He gonna know. One thing he gonna know. I don't care who you disrespect, but one thing you gonna know, not to ever disrespect an American again. That's what you will know, August 26th.